So this, this paper is all about trying to detect mid-infrared light. And uh, mid-infrared light is extremely useful because many of the molecules around us in the world will absorb specific wavelengths of mid-infrared light. So we'd like to be able to use it for widespread spectroscopy. And in fact, it's many, many labs around the world are already using pieces of equipment which detect mid-infrared light. But the problem is that they are all very expensive pieces of equipment and they use, because they need to use detectors which are typically cooled down and they find it very difficult to detect mid-infrared light efficiently. So the work we've been doing is trying to solve this problem. How can we make a mid-infrared detector which is much more efficient and will work at room temperature? And for that we're trying to use nanotechnology. The way to think about this scenario is like, uh, imagine you lost a kid in a crowded environment and uh, like a football stadium. So if you want to identify where the kid is, it is almost next to impossible to identify the kid just by listening to their voice because background noise is so large that you won't be able to hear to kids voice. Rather a more efficient way uh, and faster way to identify the kid is to look for peculiarities in the crowd surrounding to the kid. That is because people surrounding to the lost kid will behave differently. In that way you can easily notice the kid. Similarly in our detection method we are not trying to detect infrared light directly because there is so much of background noise. So rather we are coming up with a different way where you try to notice the changes in the molecules uh, surrounding to the absorption of the infrared light. So that way we can easily notice the changes in the molecules or which we call it as a perturbation to the molecules due to the infrared which can be easily detected using visible sensors. And we achieve this using two ways. Uh, one is by designing a nanostructure uh, which can confine light very efficiently and this is achieved through uh, depositing a nanoparticle sitting on a metallic foil. So, a, and there will be a small gap that is formed between a nanoparticle and a foil. In that way, this uh, gap way, which is filled by the molecules can effectively trap light. So it acts like a bigger antenna that confining the light to the gap where the molecules are deposited. And this whole system is assembled onto a slab of material that absorbs infrared. So the second part of this whole method was to look at the changes in the molecular vibrations which are staying very close to this infrared uh, absorption using visible. So since this nanoparticle on a metal system strongly confines the light, allows us to do very strong uh, light matter coupling interactions with the molecules in the gap. So as soon as the sample is exposed to the infrared, the molecules uh, show a dramatic change or the modulation in their intensities of the light they scatter, which is easily detected in the visible spectrum. So that way, it's a very unique way, quite different from what people conventionally do in directly detecting the infrared light by cooling their detectors. So here, this whole detection system works at room temperature, making it much more efficient way of measuring this uh, very weak infrared light. In, through this way of detecting infrared light through perturbation in the molecular uh, signatures in the visible light uh, is uh, very unique because this the perturbations happens very fast so the whole detection happens on the time scales of hundreds of nanoseconds which is very fast way of detecting as well as this works at room temperature so these are the key features which allows us to utilize this infrared detection system and implement it to much uh, more compact devices which can be implemented in a larger applications. So the reason these results that we published in this paper are, are so interesting is it leads to new ways that we can actually start to think about uh, translating these innovations into making real detectors. So these detectors have a higher efficiency, you don't need to cool them. So what we're looking to do next is to try and actually see if we can make instruments which use these new sorts of detectors. And since such instruments are very widespread in labs around the world, the ability to be able to, to reduce the price on them allows them to actually be used much more widespreadly. So for instance, for detectors uh, in medicine, uh, for detection actually in personalized medicine, potentially in the home, uh, for detection of uh, 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 
chemicals like explosives and security applications and in viruses. So in very, very many different pieces of equipment, this is something that would be really advantageous. Detection of infrared light has much wider implications in sensing molecules. So we are trying to implement this technique to work in water medium where we can uh, detect uh, cancer uh, molecules, which, are, uh, which is a very big research problem uh, across the globe so that uh, the whole uh, median for detections can work in a point of care diagnostic systems uh, with, which works at room temperatures and works at very fast time scales. That's the kind of ambition where we are going in. Uh, I'm always very fascinated with uh, looking at very small signatures or the signal in a pile of noise. Um, this highly fascinates me because there is so much of information hidden in the bigger noisy spectrums. For example, molecules which are jiggling and vibrating and um, doing tumbling at room temperature all the time looks like a noise when you look in a bigger global picture. But when you start looking at a nanoscopic features, there is a very interesting information about how this molecule interacts with neighbors and how they interact with the external temperature uh, that tells about how the system governs. It not just allows to make us better devices that can do infrared sensing, but it also tells about how the life functions in global picture. So what interests me is how to actually develop completely new ideas for different technologies. I always liked this when I uh, worked for Hitachi, there was an idea of um, pole star research. So blue sky research, we look in every direction. But pole star research, we look in a particular direction, but we don't know how to get there. It's a big, big forests and mountains in the way, and all we can do is head off in particular directions. My own interest in research is that it's in areas where it's disruptive, uh, not very immediately, but in maybe five to 10 years, where completely new concepts can be used to actually do interesting, new and important things for society.